All right. So in our previous class, uh, we have seen the first example, how we can create different type of request, like get request, post, put, and delete request. So now today we are going to see how many ways we can generate the post request. So we can generate or we can create different ways of post request. So whenever you do the post request, we have to send a body along with the request. We have to send a body, right? And this body we can create in multiple ways. Okay, so today we will see how many ways, how many ways we can create, we can create request body. Okay, how many ways we can create a request body. So there are mainly four ways are there. The first approach is what by using hash map. So by using hash map, we can create a request body and then we can send along with the post request. So that is a one approach which we have. The second approach is by using org.json okay so there is one more uh, library which we have so we have to add that library org.json so by using uh, org.json we can also create a request body so using org.json library so this library we have to add in the pom.xml and we will get separate classes for that and uh, by using them we can create our request body and the third approach is what by using Pojo class by using Pojo class. What is Pojo means? Pojo means plain object, plain old Java object. And this is again, uh, we have to create a Java class. Okay. I say plain old Java object. So this is actually uh, most of the times, so this is a more famous way to create a body uh, using Pojo, plain object, uh, plain old Java object so this is a full form of pojo and uh, we have to create a separate class and by using the separate class we call it as a pojo class by using that we can create a request body and the third approach is the third fourth approach is uh, using an external json file okay suppose i have some json data in external file and i want to pass the data as a request body request i can use that file so using external json file okay these are the four different approaches which we have to create request body okay so now we'll see one by one so how to create hash map yesterday we have seen one example today i'm going to show you one more example how to create request body using hash map using org.json library using pojo and using external json file Okay, so this is the concept for today. So first, let us start with one by one. So before that, we need to have an API. So let's try to use student API to perform these operations. And parallelly, I will also show you uh, show you other requests, get post put request. First, let us mainly focus on post request, okay? Because this is the most important and multiple ways we can create request body. Okay, so the first, uh, before starting them, so let us uh, start our API, student API. So for that, what you can do is, we need to just go to our uh, student.json file, which we already created earlier. Let me just go to uh, automation practice JSON file. So here I have a student.json file. Now I'm going to run the file. Open the command prompt and uh, JSON iPhone server. So I hope everybody know uh, how we have to start our own API, right? So earlier we have discussed during Postman session, same thing we will continue. So JSON server is my command. And uh, then space uh, students.json. So this will run our uh, students API. So currently how many records we have in the uh, students.json file? Currently we have uh, four, five records are there. So let me remove some records. And because we will add more number of records and we will parallelly delete multiple records. Okay, so let me just remove the four and five okay all right so this is the end of third record okay done so from here to here this is one record and this is closed array and this is the closing of json so currently we have only uh three records um, let me save the file okay so currently we have only three records. Now let me just start on my API. Okay, so now it is get started. 
So don't close this window. So we have to just minimize until uh, we completed our job on this API. So let's minimize this, okay? All right, so now let us see how we can do the post request in different ways. And later I will show you get request, delete request, put request and so on. So first of all, let us focus more on post request. So let's go to Eclipse. And today I'll create a new package. Let's issue day two, uh, day two package. So inside this, I'm creating a new class and take the new class and here I name it as a uh, post request or we can create another way, ways to create post request body. Okay, so different ways to create post request body. So different ways to create post request body. So I click and finish. So this is my new class which is created. So the font is visible or else let me just increase the font. Go to preferences, general, appearance, colors and font. And this is a basic. Inside the basic, this is my text font. Edit. Let's make it as a 20. Okay. Mm -hmm. So this is my new class, which is created. So different ways to create post request body. So for that, let me create a new method. Okay, so new method we have to create. And we have a different ways, right? So let me just keep all the ways here and we will see one by one. Okay, so here. So the first approach is what? We're using hash map. Second approach by using JSON, org.json. Third approach by using Pojo class and th the fourth approach by using JSON file. Okay. So let's see uh, how we can do this. Uh, four different ways of creating the post request. Right. So for that, we have to first import uh, static packages and other things. So let me try to import them. So go to my day one and get the static packages. So these are the static pack. Even hash map is also required. Annotation is also required. So let me just copy and keep set up all the import packages because every test we require these packages. All right. So now I have imported required packages. Now, so the first approach is what? By using hash map, we can create our request body by using uh, hash map. Hash map is a Java collection and we can store the data in the form of key and value pairs. So even in the JSON also, most of the times we have data in the key value pairs. Data will be maintained in the key value pairs. So hash map is also one of the collection which is exactly suitable for hash uh, JSON format of data. Okay, so the first thing, uh, we'll see the first approach. So what is the first approach? Post request body using hash map. Okay, so post request body using hash map. So I'm creating a one method here. I'll say public void, public access modifier. If you want to access meter method from somewhere else, if you want to access it, you can just put public or else not required. So void and I'll say test post, okay, using hash map, using hash map. So this is a method name I'm giving and I'll specify this as at the rate test annotation so that we will be able to execute it. So void test using, uh, test post uh, using hash map, post request using hash map. So here we have to prepare the data. So how the data we have to pass, how we have to uh, post the data in the body. So if I just look at my uh, sample JSON, so this is actual data. If you want to pass one record, ID, name, location phone number and courses courses contains a multiple values so we have to create this courses field as an array and that array we have to pass in the collection that is hash map okay so let us see based on this data we have to prepare our own uh, hash map so let's look at this data uh, accordingly we will prepare so let's create one hash map object as a hash map uh, data and uh, equal to new hash map yesterday also we have seen it right? same thing so hash map 
Okay, so we created a new variable of hash map. Now we can store the data in the form of key and a value pairs. So when you store a key and value pair, let us look at the data. So what is the first field here? ID will automatically generate. At the runtime ID will be generated. So we no need to bother about ID. And then rest of the values we have to create. Name is a one field, location, phone, and the courses. Totally four fields which we have. So first one is name. So in the data, I will add, means put, put is a collection method. If you want to put some data in the hash map, we use a put method. So the first field is what? Name. It should exactly match with that, okay? So I'm giving some data here. Let's say Scott in my first field. Second field, so data dot put. And the second field is location. So I'll say location. And here, the value of the location, let's say France. This is second one. And now the third one. So data dot put phone number. Data dot put phone number. And here the field name is phone. And here phone number. Phone number is also available in the string format. So I'm just giving something one, two, three, uh, four, five, six, something I'm giving. So these are the fields directly available. So they are just key and value pairs, right? So they are just key and value pairs. If I just look at here, uh, name is Smith, name, location, phone number, and these are the direct fields, name and uh, key and value pairs. But when you come to the courses, which contains a multiple value, courses is also one field. This is also key, but sometimes the key can have multiple values, but actually one key is allowed only one value at a time. But if I just look at here, this key is having multiple values. Actually, we should not say multiple values. The key have only one single array as a value. So which will store this particular key can store array as a one single value. So this array entire array is considered as a one single value. Okay. So now first we have to create a courses array, which contains the two values. And then we will add that into the field. Okay, so before uh, keeping this data in the courses, what we have to do is we have to create a Java array. Okay, let me just create one course array. Course ARR, course ARR equal to, and here I will add two courses. Okay, one is, uh, let's say C is one course, and then I'll add one more course called C++. Okay, so now what is this now? Course array is one Java array course array is a java array which contains the two values and what type of array it is which is a string type of an array now course array is a string type of an array single dimensional array which contains the two values now can we add this array into the hash map as a single value obviously we can add so now what i'll do is just like other fields and values key and value pay same similarly i will add data dot put data dot put and uh, what is the field here? Courses. And what is the value of the courses? I say course ARR. This is the way we can create. So if we have a JSON array, first we have to create a Java array like this. And this Java array, we can add as a value to this particular field. So now we have successfully added all the data into this data variable, hash map. These two are together. So if we have a single fields, uh, then you can directly specify the data. And sometimes we have a multiple sets of data like this, then you have to create an array first and that array you have to add to that particular field. Okay. So now we have prepared the data and all the data is available inside this field, data field. So now we have to send a post request and along with the post request, we have to send this data. So now, let us write all the sections. Now, first of all, let's start with the given. Given, when, and then. So these three methods we have written. So in the given section, what we have to specify? What type of data we are sending, which is basically content type. So dot content type. So what is the content type we are sending? JSON format. So application slash JSON. And now body we have to send dot body. And whatever the data we created in the hash map by using hash map, just pass the data here. That's it. And the next one in when section, we have to start with the dot. And inside this, inside the when, we have to say request dot post 
post request and inside the post what you have to say url so what is the url of post request let me copy it here 3000 by default port number it will use you can just look at the request url so 3000 currently using so to post request this is the url which we have to send for post request right once you send the post request what is the validation now then so then we have to validate right so then inside the then we have to put multiple validation points so the first validation point is what the first validation point is status code always the first validation point is status code dot status code dot sorry dot uh, status code uh, status code should be 201 okay when you create a new record most of the time status code will be 201 but some apis will return 200 also sometimes and this is the one thing we have to verify and what else we have to verify we should also verify the name student name location phone number and whatever courses we have added so entire response body we can verify each and every field in the response body we can verify so for that what you can do is dot body so this is the method dot body and which field you want to verify name field name field we have to verify and the name field should be equal to this is the method okay the first parameter is a field and second parameter is a expected value so equal to what is the value we are expecting here is caught because that is the value we have passed as part of post request so in the response also we are expecting the same value which is cotton and next one so what else we can verify dot body dot body and uh, location location also we have passed so what is the location we are expecting here equals to equal to location what is the location we are expecting here is france i say france this is a one validation similarly we can also validate all other fields one by one so after location, we have also added phone number. So I can say phone, uh, which is also equal to one, two, three, four, five, six. Okay. And then we can also verify the courses, the data we can verify. So how we can verify the courses. So again, the courses contains the two values, right? So courses contains the two values. If I just look at the JSON data, so courses contains the two values. How we can refer these courses? courses of zero courses of one by using index we can represent the internal data so now dot body so dot body and uh, what is the field we have to verify now courses field in the courses verify the first field which is zero index and what is the value we are expecting here so what is the value we are expecting c c we are expecting this is the one validation point now dot body and what is the second field in the array courses of one courses of one and the value of is this c plus plus c plus plus so like this each and every field we can validate in the response okay so we already created a hash map with contains some data okay so same data we have posted so after posting the data whether it is created the record with the same data or not that we are verifying here so normally we don't need to test every field but if you just randomly one or two fields that is enough because whatever data we are posting here same data is displaying or not so we don't need to compare each and every field most of the time just verify one or two fields that is enough and if you have a complex json again we have to specify the complete json path here and accordingly we have to specify the value which will compare okay so this is and uh, finally i want to verify the header also so along with the body i just want to verify header so how we can verify the header part so i can say dot header because header is also part of the response right so dot headers cookies everything you can validate just i'm adding for header so header and uh, what kind of header we will get here is content type i want to verify so as part of the header uh, I will check the response is JSON or not. I want to verify. So I can say content iPhone type. So this is the name of the header. If you send this request in the postman tool, you will know what is the header. Okay, this is a header type. And uh, what is the value you are expecting for content type? You can expect uh, application 
slash json this is the header type you are expecting here application slash json this is the header and not only this there is something you know, car set also part of it car set equal to utf hyphen eight okay so this is a uh, actually this is the header one and if you send this request in the postman uh, you will also see the header or in the response body also uh, we can print the header value right and after that i want to print entire response body so to print entire response body what is the method dot log of all so this will print entire response body okay so here it is giving an error the method body okay one second uh, did we miss something here so this is equal location dot body location equal to branch and courses is of zero quotations closed comma sorry equal to method we missed okay sorry equal to so equal to yeah yeah, location we verify two times. Yeah, so equal to, we missed equal to method. So we cannot uh, miss this, okay? We have to say. So location we put two times. Let me remove once, okay? Name, location, phone number, and the courses of zero. And here I can say uh, equal to C++, okay? Yeah. And the content type. So content type equal to is not required. So you can, because whenever you want to verify the values, then you have to use equal to. And uh, to verify the header part, just specify the name of the header, comma, value of the header. That's it, okay? So this is a uh, way we can validate the response. So this is the first approach. By using uh, hash map, we can create a body and we are sending the data in the form of json and we are sending the post request and in the response we are verifying the content okay so this is the first approach to create post request using hash map and some people will also use this approach but this is suitable if you have small set of data okay small set of data this is preferable to use okay so after sending this request, I'm also going to delete this record parallelly. So for that, I'm going to create one more method, void test delete, okay? So delete also I'm going to create and test annotation, I will give you this priority is two. And this is for a deletion request, okay? Deleting student record. For deletion, I have written this. Okay, so let me just write the code. So how to delete the record? How to delete the record? And again, same, given, okay, given dot when, okay, and then, then. So in the given session, we do we need to pass anything for deletion request? not required anything so in the when we have to say delete method delete and if you want to delete any student so what is the url we have to specify the student id also which is part of the url so let me just keep it here and this is representing the student id whichever id is created in the previous request uh, the same id i just want to use and if you want to return the id yesterday we have seen right yesterday we have seen id will automatically generated by our script okay dynamically will generate in yesterday's session i told you how to return the id and how we can use the same id for deletion the chaining we can do it if you want or else so we can just for now output this value so currently i'm just going to create uh, one record at a time so immediately i just want to delete the record okay because this is our dummy api which we created so it is not more flexible. So I'm just creating the request and immediately I try to delete the request. I just want to work with only one record, okay? So later we will see how we can return multiple values, single value, how we can use it for another request, chaining process, we will see that later. Okay, simple, uh, I created one delete request method and once the delete is successful, what is the validation here? I can verify the status score. 
uh, that should be 200. And after deletion, we don't have any content. So even if you say log.all, you will not get anything. So I'm just ending the statement here. So simple delete request I have written here. And uh, for this, I'm giving priority. I say priority equal to one. Okay. So now we created one post request and one delete request. In the post request, we have pass body and we have generated the body by using hash map concept. Okay. So let's try to execute this and uh, right click run as and it will immediately post the data and the validation will be also done. And after that, deletion also will be completed. Okay. So run as test ng test and make sure your API is up and running parallelly. So I haven't closed my command window. I just minimized it. Okay, so now both are got passed. Now, if I just look at the console window and which is generated fourth record. Okay, the same record is got deleted. So this is working fine. So now let us see how we can generate the request body by using uh, org.json library. Org.json library. This is another way of creating the post request. Okay, so what I will do is I will just copy the same code. I'll make it another entry. Okay, and the first method I don't want to run now, so I'm just commenting this. And if you comment this test annotation, test ng will not execute this method. Okay, when you comment this test annotation, test ng will not execute this particular method. So I have commented that. So now go to the second approach. So second approach is what? Post request body using, using org.json library, org.json library. So this is the second approach. Okay, so in this, what we have to do is everything is same, only this part we have to change. Previously, we have created data by using hash map, but this time we are going to use something called org.json. So I'm also going to change this name of the method, test post using org.json or else uh, json library, okay, json library. Okay, now let us see how we can use this org.json library to create a post request. That is the second approach. Okay, so for that, the prerequisite is we have to go to pounded XML. And in the pounded XML, we have to add one dependency. So that is, uh, let me show you. JSON. So this is a library which we have to add. This is org.json library. So this dependency we required. Okay, this is the dependency we required and we can get it from Maven repository. So from where we can get it. So if you add this JSON dependency, we will get some additional uh, classes and methods from JSON. So by using them, we can create our own request body. So this is a prerequisite. So we have to add the dependency. Now go back to the, we already added. So let's go back to the request. So let me remove this hash map. Okay, now we need to create the body request by using org.json library. So first step, what we have to do is we have to create JSON object variable. So we have a predefined class that is called JSON object. JSON object data equal to new. Instead of hash map, we create a JSON object. So new JSON object. This is the first step. We have to create JSON object variable. Or we can say this object of JSON object class. This is the class name, predefined class, which will come from org.json and which is created an object. Data is my object. So we can add data into this variable. So just like a hash map, we, we also have a put method here. So data.put, same just like a hash map, data.put. And here we can say name. That's my first field. And here, I will say the value. So I'll say value is a chord. So this is a first way value. And similarly, we can also add just a second. Yeah. So similarly, we can also add uh, multiple values. So just like this copy. So 
So name is first field and then location. We already deleted this data earlier. So I'm just using same data. So location, phone number, one, two, three, four, five, six. And uh, then name, location, phone number, then courses we have to, we have to create courses. So how to create courses here? So earlier, how we have created courses by using Java array concept, right? So same thing here also. First, we have to create a Java array. So string courses, string courses array, single dimension array. And here I'll keep the values. The first course is C and second course is say C++. Two courses I have added to the courses array. Now this array I can add into the data. Data dot put data dot put and the key is what courses courses and the value is courses a r r courses okay so here yeah courses a r r so at the time of validation we use index so courses a r r so with this we have successfully added the data to the json object variable so first step we have to create a json object variable and uh, in this, we can use put method to add the data value. So every key having some value, name, location, phone number, and courses contains multiple values. So we, first we have created array, Java array, which stores some data. And then we have added this array to the courses variable. So with this, we have created. Okay. So if it is an integer value, so we should not put the double quotations for the value but keys always keep inside the double quotations okay the keys always we have to include in the double quotations but the data is depends like sometimes uh, the api will take number suppose that is a phone number if it is accepting number then we no need to keep in the double quotations and if it's taking as a string format then we have to keep in the double quotations okay so currently it is taking phone number as a uh, phone number as a string. So that's the reason I put in the double quotations. Okay. Right. So now we have prepared the data by using JSON object. And where we will get this, if you add this dependency, org.json library dependency, then uh, we will get this class. Right. So as usual, we have to pass the data again in the post body and same request. And same validation, no changes at all. Rest of the things are everything is same. Here, the main thing is how to generate the data. Okay, this is how we can generate the data by using JSON library, org.json library. Okay, so let's try to execute it. The first method I have anyway commented, this will not be executed. So this time it will execute this one. And after that, immediately the record will be deleted. Okay, let's execute now. Right click, run as test ng test okay so the first one is got failed let's see why it is getting failed so json path name doesn't match okay so some error a session error we got json path i think uh, we have given some different value somewhere Okay, four number one, two, three, four, five, six. Four number one, two, three, four, five, six. Okay, what is wrong? So we verified the name is got a location, France, phone number. Some validation is getting failed, guys. Okay, uh, daily. Okay, one second. So not deletion. So I think this is deletion is request is successful. So because we validate only status code 200. So that is passed actually, but that's not actually deleted the record. The request is successful. Okay. So we have done some mistake in the first one. JSON library while sending the request through JSON library, we have done some mistake. Let me just cross check the console output. So it is clearly saying JSON path doesn't match and expected is caught, but actually is null. Okay, so it is not taking something here. So data dot put name equal to Scott. Okay, this is a key and this is a value. Okay, 
location is France, so phone is okay. So the data we have passed correctly, but somehow validation is failed. So name body dot name equal to Scott two brackets location uh, JSON data JSON object everything is fine no issues at all. Okay, let me go to the file and see whether it is created record or not. Let me close my JSON file once. Open the JSON file, students.json, so which is also not created anything. Okay, let me just try to run one more time. It is executing, but somehow this name is not able to find it. Scott, here also Scott, name is a field. Okay. Uh, let's create one more time. Let's execute one more time. Okay, so again, there is one more field. Expected is caught, but actually it's null it is getting. Expected is caught, but null it is getting. That means it is not able to send the body. Uh, we are using JSON library, right? So we are using JSON library, not hash map. So when I use hash map, when I use hash map concept, so this data we are directly passing into the body. Okay, so this is allowed. But here we have created this data, right, by using uh, org.json library. So we cannot directly pass this data inside the body. We cannot directly pass the data inside the body. So what we have to do is we have to convert this into string format and then we will be able to send. So here we how to convert this data into the string format. I say data dot data dot to string method we have to use data dot to string method we have to use. So then this entire data will be converted into string format and then it will send as part of the request uh, in JSON format. So ultimately we have to send the request body in the JSON format only, but the data should be in the string format. And if the data is in the string format, then it will convert it into JSON format. Okay. So if you are using org.json, then this is the one step you have to remember. But if you use hash map, we cannot, we can directly pass the data. We don't need to change. But when I use org.json, then we have to change to the string and then we will be able to pass it. Okay. So I have done it. Now let me execute. Run as test ng test. Okay. So now both have successfully done. So 201 created. So 201 is status code, which is returning. And for delete request, for the delete request expected is 200. It is giving 200 a status code after deletion. So that is also got passed. So this is the second approach. By using org.json, we can create a request body. So far, we have seen two approaches. One is by using hash map, by using org.json. So now the third one is most important. Using Pojo. Pojo is nothing but a plain old Java object. Plain old Java object. So here we have to use some concept called encapsulation. In Java, we have a concept of encapsulation. What is an encapsulation? So the wrapping of variables and methods into one single class. And here we use something called getters and setters. Yes. So we have to use getters and setters to generate the data or to create the data. So now we'll see how we can create a post request by using POJO class. So that is a third one. So third approach. So for now, let me just copy this. I'll make another entry and uh, then comment this one. Commented the second one also. Now go to the third approach. So post request body using POJO class. Using POJO class. Using POJO. Okay, so this we have to modify. Okay, later we will do modification. And rest of the things are same. Given, when, then everything is same. Only the data we should modify. We, we have to take this data from the POJO class. 
Okay. So before that, we have to create one Kojo class. We have a separate class we have to create. And from that, we have to capture the data. So let me create a new package under day two. So new class, and this is our Pojo class. So I'll name it as Pojo underscore post request. Pojo underscore post request. So this is a class I'm going to create now. So Pojo underscore okay, post request. And this class contains a variables and setters and getters. So what are all variables we require? to send the body, what are all variables we required? Name, location, phone number, and then courses array. Courses is a, an array. So totally four variables are required. Three are the primitive variables. The other one is a array variable. So four variables we required. So in the POJO class, I will create four variables. One is string. Uh, it should be same name, okay? String name and string location is one more variable string location is one more variable and a string phone phone number is one more variable and one more array is required string array string courses single dimensional array. i've just declared the array later we will add the data so first we have to create a four different variables now to assign the data and retrieving the data for every variable we have to assign the data from every variable we can extract the data so for these two things we have to write getters and setters for every method. So for every variables, how to generate automatically setters and getters? We can just select the variables, go to source. And here you can find one option called generate getters and setters. Just click on this option. And for all variables, I want to generate getters and setters. So select all the variables, click on generate. So it is generated all getters and setters for every variable. I can remove from here. I can keep the variables at the beginning. So if I just look at this, for every variable, there is a getter method, there is a setter method. So what's the setter method will do? It will take one parameter and assign the value to the class variable. Same thing, set location. It will take location value and assign the location value into the class variable. So every setter getter method will be there for every variable. So setter method will assign the data to the variable getter method will get the value from the variable so like this first we have to create a class this is called pojo class this is called pojo class plain old java object class so once it is created by using this pojo class we can generate the data so now once we created this we no need to run this anything we will just use it for data preparation so go to the actual class actual test so here we are going to use this POJO class. So how to generate the data by using POJO class. So let's try to remove this. Okay, now by using POJO class, we want to generate the data by using POJO class. So for that, first of all, we have to create an object of POJO class. Then only we will be able to access all getters and setters methods. So take this class name and create an object, let's say, Post, post, uh, post request and say data equal to new uh, post underscore post request class. So I created one object. So by using this object, can we access all the setters and getter methods? Can we access? Yes. So we all have getters and setters. So we will able to access all these methods by using this data method. So now what I'll do is I will use data dot uh, set name method I'm calling set name. I'm setting the value to the name. So here I will pass the data, let's say Scott. So now what happens? This particular method will be called from POJO class and this data, Scott data will be assigned to the name. Similarly, we have to assign the data to all other variables. So for that, we can say the next method is what? Set location, set location. And here the location value I'm passing. This is a location. And what is the next one? Phone number. So data dot data dot set phone set phone number and here phone number. So name, location, phone number. The next one is what? We have to pass the uh, courses values. So how to pass the courses value? First, we have to create a string array here. String courses or courses ARR equal to in the curly braces, 
keep the value. I say C, C plus plus. This is a, uh, these are the values of array. So now uh, we have to set courses, data dot set courses. Set courses is also, we have one method here. Set courses. So get courses, set courses. Set courses will take courses array as a parameter. Courses array as a parameter. So we have to pass array here. So set courses, this courses array I'm passing as a parameter. Okay, so now this will go here and assign the same data to this uh, courses. Okay, so this is how uh, we have to create. So now uh, this is created. So data dot set courses also done. So with this, we have added all the data to the variables by using POJA class. We have just added the data. We have not retrieved the data. Okay, we have just added the data. So internally, suppose if you want to get the data, if you want to get the data from the variables, we can use uh, get methods, get location, get look, uh, get phone number, get courses. We will use those methods if you want to retrieve the data. But for now, we are just setting the data into the variables. So with this, we have done and the data is ready. Now we need to pass this data as part of your request. So I'll close my post request POJO class. Now by using POJO class, we prepared the data. So now we have to pass this data as part of your request. Okay, so how to pass the data here? And we no need to specify two string. We just say only data here. Two string is required only for uh, JSON library. So here not required. So we prepare the data by using POJO class. And the same data we are passing as part of the request. And rest of the things, again, same, no change. Okay, so let me just execute, save it, and then execute. And we already commented previous ones. First one, second one we commented. This is the third approach, post request body using POJO class. And direct request, it is there anyway. Now, run as test ng test. Okay, so now both are executed and also passed. You can see here, this is the body which is actually taken and ID is also generated. So it is got deleted. First request and second request. So this is one more approach. We can create your post request body by using POJO class, by using POJO class. This is also most uh, popular way. Many people will use it. Right, so the next one approach is what? So the next approach is what? By using the external JSON file. External JSON file. Okay. So now we'll see the fourth approach. Using external JSON file. How we can create the request body using external JSON file. Suppose I have already data in my JSON file, which is an external file. I already have some data. So I can use the data for post request. Okay, so let's see how we can do that. So let's go to your project. So I will copy one file here and uh, that file contains the data. So right click on the project, create a new file. And I will name it as body.json. Body.json. And I'm creating this file inside my, inside my project. So this is body.json file. So inside this, uh, I will keep some data. So whichever data I want to post, I will put the data here. So this is my data I want to send along with the post request. This is the data I want to send along with the post request. Okay. So create a new file and have the data like this in the JSON format and save the file. So this is the data I want to post along with my post request. Okay. So let's create uh, one more type of post method. Let's make another copy and I, I will comment this. Second one commented, third one is also commented. Now go to the fourth approach. So post a request body using the external JSON file. The external JSON file. So by using the external JSON file, we can create test a post using the external file. External. JSON file. 
Okay. So now what we need to do here is let's remove this part. So rest of them are exactly the same. So now we need to get the data from the external file. So we have to get the data from the external file. Okay. So to get the data from the external file. So first of all, we have to open the file. We have to open the file. So how to open the file here? We have to create something called file type object. File. So this is again from, comes from Java itself. File f equal to new file. And here I'll specify the location of my file where exactly it is available. So currently this file is available inside my project. So what I can do here is instead of giving the complete path of the file, I can simply say dot slash slash dot is representing your current project location dot is representing your current project location. You can write any number of ways. You can write system dot get property of user dot dir that will also get the current location or you have to provide the complete path of your file. You have to capture the path like this, go to properties and you have to copy this entire path. Right. So again, instead of hard coding this, I can just capture the current project location and then I will add the file. So dot is representing current project location dot a slash slash. The file name is what? Body.json. So here I'll say body.json. This is my file. First step. So file object, file class we have to import from java.io packet. This is comes from Java itself. Now the F is representing the file. So from that file, if you want to read the data, we have to use two special classes. One is file reader. The second is JSON tokener. Okay. So first let us try to read the data from the file. So to read the data from the file, we have to use another class called file reader representing with FR equal to new file reader. And here we have to pass this F because we already opened the file and representing that file with the F, that F we have to pass. Now this particular file reader also comes from java.io. Let me go ahead, file reader. So file reader should come from java.io. So you have to carefully import the packages guys because same class is available in multiple packages. So if you are imported incorrect package, then it will not work properly. So the file related classes always we have to import from java.io package. Okay, so import this. Okay, so now we open the file by using file reader. And then what we have to do, we have to split that file into different tokens. Means what ultimately we have to get the JSON format of data. Okay, ultimately we have to get the JSON form of data. So we have another class called file uh, JSON tokenizer. JSON tokenizer, tokener actually, tokener is a class. JSON tokener, uh, I create one variable called JT equal to new JSON tokener. JSON tokener and here we have to pass FR as a parameter. So first we open the file, we referring the file by using F. And here we have passed the file and get the file leader. Then we have passed FR, then we got the J JSON tokener. So this JSON tokener, we have to import from org.json, org.json import package. So now by using this tokener, we have to extract the data in the JSON format or in the JSON object format. So now JSON object, we have to use JSON object data equal to new new json object and here we have to pass jt json tokenizer so this json object again we have to import from org dot json done so this json object okay i think we have imported in the incorrect package let me remove this So JSON object, we have to import from org.json only, okay? So let me just try to import once again. JSON object, org.json, yeah, correct.
I think somewhere spelling mistake, JSON object. Okay, so this is fine. So here this will throw some exception, just add that. All right, so file we have captured and we open the file by using file reader. And then we have passed into tokenizer, JSON tokener. And then we have to pass this JSON tokener. Then finally we got the JSON object. So once you get the JSON object, we can directly pass. And again, this approach we already seen. If we have a data in the JSON object format, we can directly pass, right? In the first approach. In the second approach, we have seen that. In the second approach, uh, here, after hash map, we have seen. So here, we have created a JSON object. So the data is available in the form of JSON object. If the data is available in the JSON object, we can directly pass the data after conversion of string, right? So same thing we have to repeat here. So once you get the data in the JSON object, so this data we are getting from the external file. We are getting this data from the external file. Right, so now we got the data into the data. So this data we can pass directly here. But can we pass data directly here? Because there's a JSON object data. That is a data is available in the form of uh, JSON object. If the data is available in the JSON object, we have to convert to string format. Okay, don't forget this. Two string should be there. Okay, so rest of them are exactly the same. So this time we are taking the data from the external JSON file. We are taking the data from the external JSON file, right? So let me save it and then execute. So previous one, I already commented. Third one, now this is the fourth approach. Post request body using external JSON file. So make sure you are having this JSON file, same format, same fields should have. Right, so we close it and then execute. Okay, so it is done and both have been executed. So this is how we can create request body in multiple ways. All approaches are correct and all, approach, all approaches are important. But throughout the project, we always follow one single approach, okay? And whichever uh, you feel easier, you can just follow the approach. Hash map or using org.json or using POJO class or using the external JSON file. So by using these four approaches, suppose you have data in the external file, so you don't have any other way, you have to follow the fourth approach. If you have data in external files, and the rest of three approaches, we have to create the data. And again, moreover, uh, hash map, org.json. So this org.json required other dependency. And for rest of them, we don't need any other dependency. org.json and external file. So these two are almost the same. Second one, fourth one is almost the same because in both the approaches, we are using JSON library. So here also we are using same JSON library. But only thing is we are getting the data from external file. That's the additional thing. But uh, second approach, fourth approach is using JSON library, same. And the hash map, if you have a small set of data, you can go with the hash map, nothing wrong in that. But uh, better to create a POJO class. We will have a separate POJO class and by using POJO classes, we can generate the data. So all approaches are correct. All approaches are important. De depends on the scenario, you can use particular approach. Okay, so body.json, you have to create this file. If you know the JSON format, how to create the data in the JSON, you can create. So this is sample data I have shown you, right? So if you already have some external files in the JSON format, you can use it as part of data. Or if you don't have, you can create your own data. Okay, so this file you can keep anywhere, but uh, at the time of reading the file, you have to specify the location correctly. So this location, this piece of code is required. And currently I have, I have saved this file in my project itself. It is there in my project itself. So I'm directly able to read. So whatever the files, external files you are creating, make sure those files are part of your project. So that tomorrow, if you move this project to somewhere else, all the files will automatically move along with the project. Okay. 
So try these approaches uh, for today. And uh, these are the four approaches I have told you. So try these four approaches for today. And tomorrow we will continue with the other topics. Okay. And this is more related coding part. So you have to practice more. It is not a UI. It is a coding part. So code means what? You have to practice multiple times. Okay. So these are the different ways we can create a post request. And try this today and tomorrow we will discuss other things. Okay. So I'll stop for today's session here. We'll continue tomorrow.